So what's ringing in my head now, and I'd be really interested to chat maybe with the people here tonight, that I often have bells ringing in my head when I'm talking to a client or a prospective client about this learning program that we're implementing, perhaps over a four to six or 12 month period, thinking, yeah, but is this going to be supported organizationally and within the culture of this place? Is that the kind of thing then that is more of the OD perspective? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess one distinction with OD is that it, it comes from a field of thinking that is evidence-based through research. So yeah, okay. one of the things in organisational development is that you would never go to a senior decision maker and say, I have a hunch or an idea mm. or a concept or some thinking around this. You would have to present it with the research shows us that mm. based on the numbers in your workforce, based on future demand, based on some of the future trending in this industry, these are some of yeah. the considerations that you need to be aware of. So you did a whole lot of study yeah. in the field of OD. Yeah. So where did you do that or, or more particularly I guess is what changes have you seen in the field of OD yeah. since you did that study? So my first postgrad um, as an adult was in innovation and enterprise, which I loved because it was hardcore and it was all about Ooh, business. Hardcore. I know <laughs> because you know I'm one of these sort of weird con um, people who loves <coughs> concept and detail at the same time. So it was really interesting. All right, darling. I your know brain, it's your brain. Yeah, I know my, my brain is blowing a bit around this. <laughs> so I was doing innovation and um, enterprise, the uh, masters of innovation and enterprise at Swinburne. And I was loving the business focus around it, but terribly missing people amongst mm. it. And someone said to me, well, you need to be looking at OD. Mm. Now I'd enrolled in psych twice, organizational psychology twice. And I kept going to these sessions thinking, they're giving me a history of psychology and they're not preparing me for the future. Mm. So I found that psychology for me was about an awareness of concepts and theories that had gone that I might be able to add and think about with a client. But I wanted something that was going to future-proof me for and what is next for the client and what do mm. I need to prepare for. So I, I went into OD. That was at Swinburne University. Now this was back, I finished in about 1998. And I don't think they do it there anymore at Swinburne. I think it's moved yeah. to RMIT. But in 1998, it was sort of a, a breed of facilitator come lecturer come trainer that was sort of leftover hippies from the Gestalt <laughs> sort of movement. A very weird picture in our minds. Yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was... So I, I, I sort of came from more of a hardcore business environment and... I would be going to these OD sessions where people would be stopping and reflecting and considering things within a fishbowl experience yeah. with one person in the middle. And I kept thinking, That'd be very lonely. what is this? <laughs> Why are they doing this? What's the, what's the point here? You know? yeah. um, so I would suggest that in the earlier days, and I mean OD has been you know, 30 plus, 40 years in, in its making. But if we look at OD originally, which was how do we add the humanistic awareness and the systems thinking for people inside a business, and now I guess I think about people like David Cooper Ryder who does appreciative inquiry and mm -hmm. th those types of things. That's the new way of how do we get a collective group of people together and bring voice to the centre of the room and and uh, ascertain the meaning of that voice and how do we add it for value. Mm. So it's shifted quite a bit where there was sort of, again, the old way of the sage on the stage, the, mm, the, you mm, know, the professor mm. and the holder of all the knowledge. Yeah, I have the wisdom, you sit down, shut that's up. That's it, yeah. that's it, to um, getting together and going, we start from where we start from, we are where we are, um, very much sort of around, I guess, some of the mindfulness concepts that we're all embracing mm. these mm. days. So this thing called humanistic management, mm. I think we know what it means, but maybe you could explain it to us. And does it really exist? Does it really happen out there in the real, real world? I, I said pointing at your books, but out yeah, there. Out yeah. there yeah. Oh, look, I live in hope and optimism, um, but I'm very aware of the reality of the true cost to business at the moment is about $14 billion um, annually in Australia at the moment. 
with things like workplace stress, um, payouts, um, mental health challenges in workplaces, bullying and harassment, all of those things that if early intervention or good support mechanisms at the earlier part, which is an mm. OD piece, could be put in place, we could, we could reduce that dramatically. Um, I think there's also a huge pushback from the younger generations that are going, I won't be spoken to or treated like yeah. you spoke or treated my father or mother. Mm. I'm different from that. And I think that we are facing some major trends of change such as the ageing workforce population, the Asian um, involvement and inclusion in our region mm. and technology. So we can no longer behave the way we got away with behaving. So humanistic management is, do I understand what human needs are, mine and yours, yeah, yeah. and do I understand the systems that we all have to coexist within in the business?